So here we are going to do this pea carbonara. We're going to do it with some fresh pasta, fresh peas. We're going to make a pea stock. Uh, this is actually a dish that I'm cooking for the upcoming James Beard dinner that we're doing with a bunch of local chefs, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, and what this is, is a take on the classic carbonara. It still has your pork, it still has your pasta and your egg, but we're just going to shift it around a little bit and make it just a touch different. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do, this is a quick pan sauce, but we do need to make a pea stock first, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to use, what I did was I have fresh peas, all right? The peas come in a pod, obviously, so we take the peas out, and we're left with all these pods. What do you do with these pods, everybody asks? You don't throw them in the garbage. They make a killer pea stock or a pea soup, all right? And I'm going to give you essentially the basics to make the stock or the soup, or whatever you want to make. Could be a pea sauce, for instance, okay? But this is going to be the base for the pasta sauce instead of just using water, which traditionally carbonara is. All right, so we're going to start with a pot. In the pot, we're just going to pour just a touch of olive oil. All right, very, very, very easy. And we're just going to throw the pea stocks in, okay? And what we're going to do with the pea pods is we're going to just let them sweat. And also, I picked up some fresh sheets of pasta from your local fresh pasta store. This is from Villarina's. Nice pasta, okay? It can just be a pasta sheet. You can make it at home, whatever you want to do. All right, and I just want to show you, buy the sheet. Don't let them cut it for you because you can keep the sheet in the refrigerator for a couple days or in the freezer like this, and you can cut it in any shape that you want, okay? So if you want, say you want capellini, something you know more like angel hair, something very small, you cut just down, it's rolled up like so, and what you do is you unravel it, and you have fresh pasta. This would be more like a linguine. If you wanted to cut it a little bit smaller, like a capellini, it's almost like a julienne. All right, very thin. Very thin little shreds, okay? And that comes out to a nice thin pasta, all right? Or you can do something like fettuccine like I did before okay nice long threads like so or you can do parpardelli which are even wider like so okay so anything you want to do you get a couple sheets you do it like so a lot of fun okay so we have our pea stock going here we're gonna toss a little bit of thyme in there with it and then we're going to do a little bit of water just to the top of the pea pods itself all right and we'll put that back on the stove we'll turn up the heat and we'll let that simmer for a few minutes okay other prep work that we need to do for the pasta we do all the cut cutting work first okay you want to prep everything first that way when you get it started in a pan everything is ready to go okay so what i'm doing is i'm just slicing a little bit of garlic Watch those fingers, tuck your thumb back, all right? And you get nice little thin shreds of garlic like so. Probably about two cloves for about a pound of pasta. All right. Also what I have here on the board, I have some rendered pancetta, okay? You can use pancetta, you can use guanciale, you could use, uh, guanciale is uh, pork gel that's been cured or you can do bacon, whatever you have. Whatever pork product you have is best, all right? Nothing wrong with a little pork product. Pork makes it better, all right? And then we're gonna julienne a little bit of fresh mint. Just like you would julienne basil, okay? The mint is just gonna brighten up the peas. Peas and mint, very, very, very classic spring combination, okay? This could be a ravioli filling or could go with any pasta, or even a pea puree with a little bit of mint. All right, so we have our garlic, we have our mint, we have our pork product, we have some fresh parsley, a little bit of thyme, some chili flake, and of course, Parmesan Reggiano. Some people make carbonara with pecorino. I prefer Parmesan. We have some frozen peas. The frozen peas, what we're gonna do with those is we're actually gonna make the pea stock. And what we're gonna do is when the pea stock is done, we're gonna put it in a blender and we're gonna blend in frozen peas. And what that does is the peas cool the stock quickly, 
Okay, this is important why we're using frozen peas. The, the peas will cool the stock and keep the bright green color, which is what we're looking for. Okay, so and then next to it, we have fresh peas. The fresh peas we're going to use actually in the pasta. We're going to blanch those real quick and toss them in. We're going to take a little bit different take of it. We're going to top it with a poached egg as well. So we're going to show you how to poach an egg. The pea stock is rolling, as I explained before. It's pea shells with water, a little bit of thyme. There's some mirepoix. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend that. I have one that I've already worked. It's probably simmered for about an hour and a half. Frozen peas inside. And what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to pulse it a little bit. First, you always want to pulse a hot liquid. Otherwise, you will have a new paint on your ceiling. All right, so what we're going to do is, again, just pulse it a little bit. And then once it's pulsed a couple times, we'll let it run. All right. So now, as you see, the frozen peas are turning this bright, bright, bright green. That's what we're looking for. Beautiful. All right, we'll reserve that until we're ready for it. Uh, what we're going to do now, we have our water boiling in the back. It's uh, just simmering water now. We will add salt to it, okay? A lot of salt. Salt is good in pasta water. The, especially with fresh pasta, the pasta is only going to touch the water for just a minute or so. So you want it to taste like the Long Island Sound, okay? Nice and salty, or the ocean, that is, a little bit more saltier than the Long Island Sound. Uh, our water here is poaching. It's nice and nice and low, okay? Little bubbles on the bottom of the pan. And what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little vinegar because you want to poach in acidulated water, okay? That helps the, uh, the egg congeal. All right, so we're going to let that go. In this pan here, which I have on high heat, okay, we're going to make the actual carbonara of the pasta sauce. We're going to start with just a touch of olive oil. All right, maybe a couple tablespoons. And then we're going to throw in the pork, okay, which is pancetta, as I explained before. All right, it's already been rendered, so we're not going to sit here and wait for the, for the pancetta to get crispy, okay? I also I have some of the fat reserved that's on the outside of the pancetta uh, when you refrigerate it. You can do it a day before or so. I'm going to add a little bit of butter in here, all right? Our sliced garlic, just a little, and just a hint of chili flake, okay? So in that pasta water that I have boiling already, I'm going to throw our fresh peas, all right? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to blanch those for a moment, lock in that bright green color as peas cook, and watch the pasta sauce at the same time, okay? So if this starts to brown and get a little too crazy, what we're going to do is we're just going to add that pasta water in because essentially carbonara, the, the liquid in carbonara is made with pasta water. This is going to pop again, all right? So we got to be very careful. Move it away from the heat, okay? Once that little grease in there hits the heat, you will get some flame, so you want to avoid that, okay? All right, so we have the insert to our pasta bot here. The peas are ready. I just quickly blanch those. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to toss that right into the sauce. Beautiful. All right, so next up going into that pasta water is going to be the fresh pasta. Okay, this is the beautiful fettuccine that we made earlier. I'll give that pasta a nice stir. You can use tongs, you can use a spoon, but you do want to agitate the water so those nice... Uh, strands get separated. So we have the acidulated water. We have little bubbles in the bottom of the pan. We're going to drop an egg in, okay? And that right when you drop the egg in, what you're going to do is you're going to stir the water, all right? And that's going to help the water and the egg form that nice, tight little ball of egginess that everybody loves and looks for in a poached egg, all right? We can do two. I like to do two just in case one breaks when you take it out. Okay, pop it in. They won't stick together. They will separate as you go. All right, in the meantime, we got some beautiful flavor here. I'm gonna take this pea stock now. Okay, we've got it in the blender. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to strain it into the uh, into the pot. We have a little untraditional strainer here, uh, and what we're going to do is we're just the liquid's going to pour right through. Okay, this is actually a splash guard; it works just as well. Anything with fine holes, all right, and you just push it through. We get a little bit of the pea stock. What we the reason we are straining this is we don't want all the texture from the peas, but we do want the flavor. Okay, so that's coming through nicely. And now we go with a touch of the pea stock. Beautiful. Okay. That's nice. That's what we're looking for. Okay, a little bit of salt, pepper. All right, we're about ready for the pasta. See how that stays nice, bright green, beautiful color, okay? Now we're gonna take the insert of the pasta out, strain it out a little bit. Oh, this looks good. Take a little bit of that water with you, okay? Because as soon as the pasta hits the pan, the pasta itself is still gonna soak up all that flavor. You never wanna serve pasta straight out of the, out of the pasta pot and pour the sauce on top, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a porous ingredient. It wants to soak up the sauce, all right? So let it do that. Let it soak it up. Beautiful. Okay. Now, normally in carbonara, okay, the cheese would be added here, and then the, the heat would be turned off, okay? And then an egg yolk would be cracked into the pasta. But, I, but again, I'm just changing it. I'm doing a little bit of an untraditional carbonara here where I'm going to poach the egg, and I'm just going to place it right on top. So the customer or you, when you're eating it, gets this really nice soft poached egg that they can crack, and the gooiness just falls into the pasta and you mix it up. Killer. Great, great, great. Okay, have a little taste just to make sure. Oh, yeah, that's good. If it gets a little bit dry after you use the cheese, you can either use a little bit more pea stock or a little bit of pasta water. Either or, okay? You want it to have a nice texture to it. Okay, so here we have the pea carbonara coming off of the stove. Beautiful, look at those colors. It's like spring in a pan with a little bit of richness. Nothing better than a bowl of uh, fresh pasta, I'd say. All right, so we'll give it a little bit of toss. We want all the goodness. Again, this is the pea stock, the pasta water, the pancetta, the fresh peas, gorgeous right in the middle of the bowl. Little twist at the end, just gives it a little bit of height. Nice. Okay. Take a little bit of the pea goodness on the bottom. The peas and the garlic. That looks pretty good. Can't complain about that. A little wipe on the edge. All right, so two things to finish, okay? One, or actually a numerous things to finish. We're going to sprinkle a little bit of fresh thyme, a little bit of that julienne mint that we did earlier, fresh parsley, wouldn't be carbonara without parsley, and then some just cracked pepper. Carbonara is all about the cracked pepper as well, don't forget. That's where it gets its name from the carbon in people's faces. It splashes up from the cars, and it's that, those black little specks. That's where the name comes from, all right? Now, last but not least, the poached egg on top. Okay, you can do it two ways. This is a beautiful sous vide egg, all right, that just came out of the sous vide machine. I had cracked one before. Here it is here, okay? But we're going to use the old-fashioned egg, which is the one just out of the poaching liquid, okay? I put it in this bowl here. It's still warm, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide it to the edge of the bowl, push down a little bit on the top of the pasta so it has a place to rest. Boom right in the middle. Beautiful. Little salt, little pepper on top of the egg, and a little Parmesan, a little more, why not? How about that? <whistles> Tell me you couldn't eat that for dinner, or lunch, or breakfast. See you soon.